We are joined today by Scott Walter, PhD, bot genius, really, mechanical and aerospace uh, engineer, uh, mm -hmm. guy who has worked in offline uh, robotics programming, I guess, uh, it, because that is uh, apparently a thing I just found out. So that's exciting. And he knows what he's talking about. So we're going to talk about what we've learned recently uh, from the Q2 earnings call and whatnot about bots. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. Scott, so good to have you here. Same here, Brian. It's, uh, I think, officially 7.30 on a Friday evening, which I think mm -hmm. that means the weekend has started. So this has. truly is the Tesla weekend. It truly is. It truly is. So we saw some things about bots. Uh, I'm going to share my concern and you tell me how crazy it is. We saw mm -hmm. big progress at AI Day. We yes. saw bigger progress at AI Day 2. Are we in the March of Nines? Are we likely to get stuck at a local maximum? Where are we at with that? How's progress looking to you? I think what's happening is sort of what we're seeing in FSD, a little bit of a rewrite of the code. So it may seem like things are slowing down. And when they slow down, they're then going to speed up because now you have a new architecture. I'm doing everything pretty much just by these heuristic algorithms where they were teaching it what to do. And then they sort of announced, I think it was at the last shareholder meeting, uh, that they finally had that end to end. They were did the first grasp from that. So things have slowed down. Now I think they're picking up. Probably the biggest surprise is that we didn't hear that there was like one or two dozen bots. You know, Elon wasn't even sure himself. I was like, well, five, because we know there's five out there because we've seen pictures of five. And then he said, I said, well, it's 10, but maybe it's because some of them are always in a state of disrepair. So maybe uh -huh. there's like only five at a time ever walking around, just something like that. But he didn't say that there were hundreds of bots. Right. There were a lot of people who were saying, I'm predicting we're going to see uh, X number. And then that based on that trend, I think we'll have the production by this date. Uh, it's harder than they thought. Um, can you explain what he said about actuators? Yes. And by some people, I think you mean Randy Kirk. Okay. Oh, I just was on an interview with Randy Kirk, and uh, he's a great guy, but he dreams big of, he of does. specifically he dreams big of electric sheep. So, sometimes he pulls us into his dreams, and sometimes <laughs> we have to temper our own expectations. But, you know, I'm still bullish. I think what's happened is that our timelines have kind of shifted a little bit, and that the, you know, getting the, let's say, the first production candidate set up is taking a little while. Now, I'm, I'm glad you asked about the actuators because that is important. Is, you know, Elon did not give us a new piece of information. He's told us something that they already said before, at, I think the second AI day, and that is how Tesla had to design their own actuators because off the shelf actuators, just you cannot find the ones you actually need to make a human robot. And he said, you know, for no price. So you can spend as much money as you want, you're still not going to find them. They're just not right. So that was not a new piece of information. What was the new piece of information was that suddenly some voice in the background said, at least not a compelling one. Did you catch that? Okay. And then Elon kind of went on. And I was like, OK, who said that? And I, I played it back a few times. I couldn't tell. And then I went back to say and they had the transcript and it was Lars who said it. Now, if you read the transcript, it looks like Lars is saying, you know, it's not compelling. And it's like, oh, is he talking down? Optimist, but you have to hear the whole thing because what he's doing is he's kind of correcting Elon. It's like, yeah, you can build a bot, but if you don't have the right actuators, is it is like almost no point. Now, what has Lars got to do with Optimus? I mean, absolutely nothing. He's he's the head of like you know the, the vehicle design and manufacturing. He's not on the bot team, but he's definitely a consumer of the bot. So oh. he basically is indirectly saying, hmm. Optimus is compelling because I need this beast to be able to produce my vehicles. Because remember, he's thinking about the vehicle design and everything else. But going back to your question of the actuators, is they are very important because if you don't get them right, the bot's not going to have the performance characteristics you need. And also like the, the energy consumption because you, you don't want th uh, things that are too powerful because you you want to get eight hours out of that battery. So you want to make sure that, that they're efficient, that they're compact. And Elon used the term lighter and tighter a few times. Now, probably the only thing that counts more than actuators will, in Optimus might be like nuts and bolts. So you can look at it and say, well, the actuators are like a majority of the bot. Um, 
close to that in mass, if not in cost. So depending upon the costing analysis you do when you break it down, you can easily say the actuators are going to be half, if not more, of the cost of Optimus. And so if you get that wrong, it means Optimus is coming in either at, mm, you know, $8,000 or twenty-five dollars or $30,000, depending on how much those actuators cost. So you want to kind of get that right. The other thing about actuators is they can be a bit temperamental. You know, it, if you just try building them in a lab, which is they're doing now, is if you want to make a bunch of actuators that are identical to one another, they're probably going to have a bit of variation, which means your control system has all kinds of fits if you're tuning it for like a certain set of actuators and your next set of actuators is a little bit different especially if they're different within the same bot. So you can imagine right now, they built about 10 and Elon says, and eh, you know, more each month. Now what's more mean? Does more mean like one each month or two or three? So it means that, you know, they're adding to it, but they're adding slowly because they don't have the production candidates. And he, he then said, the first Tesla bot to have the Tesla design actuators will be November-ish. And I was like, oh, wait a minute, that's a surprise because we know Bumblebee, the very first one, you know, the, the high school tech project that came out, that was using the off the shelf actuators. And that's where they kind of learned from that science project of what they needed and, and this is what we have. And then they rolled out something on the stage of, and it didn't move, we couldn't really see anything and they said, said they were getting very close. And those are probably the, what we're seeing on display in the Tesla shops. Because the motors probably, they, they probably don't have the armatures in there. They just have the outer casings and everything so everyone can kind of see it. And eventually they put the bits in there to make the actuators start working. And then that's what we started to see in January when the videos came out that, yes, Optimus can go ahead and, and move around. So they have that. So it's like, well, okay, we're seeing it. It's got what look clearly to be the Tesla design actuators. So why are you talking like in November-ish? And then he kind of interjected in their production candidate and as typical of Elon, it's kind of like assembler language. There's like the push and the pops that sometimes, you know, this phrase is supposed to go over here and you just got to realize that there's a stack when he talks. Okay, production candidate. Um, actuators is really what he was talking about. So that means, and then he said right after that, and then they're ready to ramp. Hmm. They'll be ready to ramp after that. So that means, okay, we get the first ones, we check it out, it's pretty good. And now it's going to go up. So it's by the end of the year, if, you know, if November-ish is like November 1st or 2nd, if it's November 30th, it starts to get a little bit tighter. But that means they're getting ready for that production ramp and they might start to uh, be pumping them out. Wow. So the actuators are basically the little, the motors, basically. The motors. And we need ones that are smaller, lighter and tighter, lower energy drain, optimized for Optimus, we need eight pounds of lift or 20 pounds of lift, uh, presumably not more than 25 because uh, if it's built for a human world, 25 times two is 50, that's the OSHA limit. Uh, probably don't need to go too much beyond that, especially on an early model. Um, and then you think that, um, and what I hear you saying is they're still making candidates. We're not we're not through that phase and we probably can't get through that phase until we have all of the needed components, including all of our little actuators, plus the testing. Right, right. So I think the actuators is probably what's really the missing piece right now. Um, mm -hmm. And of, of course, the software that's going to go in there. So mm -hmm. the bulk of it, they probably get together. They may be refining a few things on some of the joints, you know. I think they're happy with the knee, they're happy with the hip, everything else that's in there. There may be a little bit of tweaking. There's probably some discussion about what are they gonna, you know, the ankle looks good, but everyone wants to know, what are they gonna do about those feet? Why are they such flat feet? When are they gonna put some spring in the feet or something like that? And that's mm -hmm. probably coming a little bit later, but mm -hmm. they seem to have actuators that have pretty good pop, it's just getting them to be controlled, making the packaging a little bit nicer, because you know, you still see all these wires kind of coming out here and there. It looks kind of like an NFL linebacker with the shoulders and, a little rough on the edges so it's like mm, again to be you know osha is going to say you got to get rid of so you got to put some padding you got to do something on there so it doesn't look quite so intimidating <laughs> so you, you're going to see something like that but i think most of the skeleton is very easy there's, there's not like a whole lot of complexity there's things that are castings um there's some things that are easily light machining uh, i don't see i mean and when you look at that do you see any manufacturing process that looks complex or difficult 
No, nothing. Yeah. Re- it, it's all uh, stuff that you could, yeah, build in a very small shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. I mean, the, yeah. there's, I think, one stamping, which is going to be the torso. And that's a very small stamping and can be done in a, a very light, footprint it doesn't need right. anything massive or anything like that no. and it's probably done with soft tooling already in sparks because i think they're making stampings out there already huh, huh. yeah so now just you... to say just just going back to yeah. the 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 weight limit according to the specs optimus is going to be able to carry up to 45 pounds perfect so just under the osha limit yeah and and deadlift 150 wow but its arms extended capacity is 10 that makes sense so that's probably again and everyone else has limits similar to that when you look at the other human bots probably because they're looking over at osha's shoulder and saying oh okay so what should it be right you don't need to well going much past that all of a sudden you're overbuilding it uh, for a lot of applications that it may not have uh are we going to run into a march of nines where where even though we're 99.9 that's not good enough and then the extra nine does, gets us closer, but we're still not there. Is this going to drag out for years, or do you think it's coming in the next year or two? Well, Elon said that um, because part of the question, that say question, was how many are there, and when will it be useful? And he said that it should be useful sometime next year within their factories, and then later on, you know, he's talking about uh, other locations, probably sub suppliers after that. He also indicated that it's sort of already being used right now, but more or less experimentally in R&D, looking at the various operations to make sure it can do it. But you wouldn't say in useful in the sense that, uh, let's say, saving the company money. Because if it's sitting there and being really, really slow and, and slowing down production, that's not useful. OK, it's doing the task, but it's not useful because it's not keeping up. So they're probably doing it during a swing shift or something like that, just going out there, testing it seeing it, how it's going to work, doing a little bit of secrecy, verifying, getting ready, and then it should be useful. And then, now with Elon, you know, he didn't say early next year. He said sometime next year because he's hedging his bets on whether it's going to be January or it's going to be December. But it will be coming, and I think it'll be coming pretty quick. And again, going back to you don't want to over-engineer it because the human body, when you're out there working, I mean, think about your, your luggage. I mean, what's the maximum luggage limit when you check in the airport? It's 50 pounds. Mm-hmm. Because people have to lift that all day long. And so they say, they're capping it right there. And it's the same in the factory floor is you don't have things that are very heavy. But when you do, there are these things which are these assist, lift assists that come over and do it. So generally, no one ever has to relift more than 20 or 25 pounds at a time. And if they have to do more, there's some equipment for doing that. So you don't need to over-engineer the bot. Absolutely. You just got to keep it, make sure it's human scale. And, and not like 95th percentile human scale, probably more 50th, 50th percentile. That's good enough. Absolutely. Uh, yes, it doesn't need to be a bodybuilder. It, yeah, it doesn't even need to be above average. Average will do the trick. What do you suspect it's going to weigh? Oh, they told us. They said it's going to weigh, let me see, I think 125 pounds. Now, I went through and I didn't take them on face value and I started adding them up. And I'm getting it to be maybe 130, 135 pounds. But again, I'm having to guess and make a few guesstimates. But part of it's an informed guess because they actually give us the masses for all the actuators. Oh. Assuming that those are relevant. So right in the slides from AI Day 2, we have the masses of all the actuators. We could add them up. Unfortunately, we don't have the masses for the actuators to the fingers. So I kind of guessed on that. So I get an idea. I know how many batteries are in there. So I can figure out how much the batteries weigh and all that. And whoop, you can get it up there. And I get, um, I think it's like right around 130 pounds, something like that. And everyone else, all the other humanoid robots are also right around there, except Atlas is like 200 pounds. <laughs> and, and Atlas is like yeah. 4'11". Oh, definitely wow. stout. Definitely stout. Wow. Yeah. You, you don't get to see it very often in perspective yes. with, with much context. And Atlas, as, as brilliant as it is, I don't need parkour. I need simple tasks done. I mm-hmm. needed to fold my laundry or walk yeah. my dog. And Atlas is very, very expensive in the engineering. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and again, I, I always say is that I, the last time you applied for a job, or let's say every job you ever applied for, is anywhere in there that it say that parkour was a job requirement? 
You know, I, I'll have to think back. When I worked at the cookie company at the mall, I think they said cashier skills. So that's okay. as close as I think it got. Right. Yeah. Right. No, that yeah. wasn't on the list. And mm -hmm. it's great for a demo. Not as great if every robot costs 50000 more than it should. Yes. And also, you'll notice with all those videos, they're heavily, heavily edited. Uh, yes. Yes, and yes. during those amazing demonstrations, you'll notice the employees are not even paying attention because they've been running this program for a week to get yes. enough takes to stitch together. Right. Um, yeah, if they could do it in one take, people would be lined up to see it like, uh, like those excited faces we saw for the Cybertruck crash testing. Yeah. When are they going to release that? Yeah. Now, they, they have a few Atlas robots just because they need enough to be able to make it through all the takes because it keeps falling down and breaking and they always have to have spare parts. And each of them is north of a hundred thousand dollars, maybe more. So oh, they sure. don't have fleets of them. They, you know, it's it still is kind of an experimental thing. They've got some well, other bots. You know, the Spot they're able yeah. to make those. That's that's useful. But 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 Atlas those are is still, still a long 40, ways. Yeah, Spot is still forty to fifty thousand, which tells me Atlas is easily two hundred because Probably. it is so much more sophisticated and in lower volume by orders of magnitude. Uh, so and it's not designed for manufacture. They even said that. No, no, no. It's what's it? Uh, I guess it's designed to carry a med pack through a war zone. I mm -hmm. I don't know. That's the only real application I can think of for it. Uh, I guess it could examine the uh, launch site after a after a rud, uh, just like Spot did. We've seen him do that, um, which is pretty funny. So we're gonna. Uh, come back in a few days and we're going to talk about um, the roadmap from here where how we get the steps needed to get from here into production uh, what they mean and how long each one could take uh, but I do want to thank Scott Walter for joining us uh, you mm -hmm. can follow him on Twitter as I do at going ballistic 5 link in the description and uh, Scott thank you uh, for your time and a pleasure chatting with you Okay, and I want to thank all the clever bots out there. <laughs> he watches. Ah, very cool. <laughs>